Hi there, my name is Marcel Furst and I welcome you all to my second episode of Overland Vagabond. Although I haven't gotten much feedback on my first introductory episode, I hope you still find this channel interesting and worth watching. This video is the first of a series of probably five to six episodes concerning the vehicle that we will drive while on the journey, where I attempt to explain the choice of the platform, the choice of the cell, that's where I'm taking this footage from, the build of the vehicle, an interview with the constructor of the cell, and some more interesting stuff. Today I will talk about the choice of the platform and, before that, the type of vehicle that I believe is the right choice for our undertaking. One can think of different vehicles apt for overlanding, caravans from small to large, basically trailing along a sort of uh, wagon. Camper, camper vans, from simple to sophisticated, where the car and the habitable space are merged together into one single unit. Jeeps, troopers, cruisers, better for coping with all terrain for sure, but requires some thinking or quite sophisticated modifications to cater for the habitable space. And uh, lastly, the purpose-built expedition vehicle, um, typically stripped down lorries with lots of engineering, customization and modifications. All these are good and valid vehicles, don't get me wrong, depending on what you intend to do, where you want to go, how much you are prepared to compromise, your budget and so on. This leads inevitably to one important question. What are your requirements? What are the criteria based on which you can make an informed decision? In my case, and again this is very personal and you may have almost certainly different needs and wishes, wishes than mine, I, I was looking for something that can be serviced anywhere in the world, as I'm not an auto mechanic, can be put into a container as we intend to cross continents a few times, can cope with all sorts of terrain, is robust, durable and especially reliable and can offer a adequate quality of living um, covering essentially all basic needs and why not is fun to drive and good looking so going back to the list caravans to me it's not the right choice because i can't imagine myself trailing a caravan across a desert, for instance. Campers, camper vans, the habitat is very appealing, but I don't think they are sturdy enough to cope with the type of tracks and terrain that we intend to do, let's say a trek in, in Australia. Jeep, troopers, cruisers, well, it's a very good choice 
for weekends and holidays over landing. But too many compromises for a long journey that takes a year or even longer like ours. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that I had to resort to build my own expedition vehicle. But how to fit those big vehicles into a container? Well, the answer was to find a base platform and a cell that together were just small enough to fit into a container. So no lorry is a base platform. Instead, we looked for a pickup where we could replace the loading bay with the cell that was providing the habitable space. Yes, I know there are cells that you can directly place onto the loading bay and detach them whenever you need to. But I was looking for the best compromise between weight and space. And carrying around 150 kg of loading bay was simply not good enough for me. Then comes the choice of the pickup. I preferred a brand new one, simply because of reliability reasons. The most sold pickup worldwide is notably the Toyota Hilux. You remember, it needs to be serviced anywhere in the world. And I was fervently awaiting the release of their latest model in Europe. This happened eventually in early 2016, but what a disappointment. Instead of the usual 3-liter engine sold in Australia, in Thailand or in South Africa, in Europe Toyota released only a 2.4-liter engine, a no-go for me. I had to look for an alternative. I scanned all available makes and models, from American to European size, from powerful to economic. Long story cut short, I eventually chose the Ford Ranger Wildtrek with a 3.2-liter engine. Based on the routes that we are planning to take, availability of fuel is not always guaranteed, so I configured the Ranger with a diesel engine. Auto or manual gearbox, both are equally good, no question. Since I could choose, I went for an auto one, simply because it's more comfortable to drive. I eventually acquired a dark grey metallic Ford Ranger in autumn 2016, just in, uh, in time to start the design and the development of the custom-made cell. But this is the topic for the next episode. To conclude this video, I would like to leave you with a couple of hints. When it comes to choosing an overland vehicle, everyone has its own personal needs and wishes and requirements. Make sure you understand yours very well and don't let yourself be trapped by what a friend has purchased or by something that looks cool and fantastic on the internet or on a show. Take your time to make a decision, evaluate the option, look for alternatives, do background checks, scan the forums. There are many, many good online sources to collect information. What you need is time to do your homework. And lastly, have always a plan B. Sometimes things are not going to fall right in place. Be prepared to deviate from the ideal course without having to backtrack to the beginning. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you do, please subscribe and leave a comment down below. See you next time.